Previously on Integza. Unfortunately, I don't own a tachometer, so I wasn't able to get a reading on the exact speed. Well, that's not happening. Hello, you punks! This is Integza, the only show on YouTube where knowledge comes out of necessity. I think. In the last video, we 3D printed a working Tesla turbine, a cheap and affordable physical model of Tesla's favorite invention. The turbine seems to work just fine, but I really want to know how fast it can go to compare it to future projects. And as you might have noticed from my overly dramatic and stressed intro, I don't own a tachometer. A tachometer is a device that measures RPMs. RPMs means rotations per minute. A minute is 60 seconds! To quench my thirst for speed, I decided to buy a tachometer. Of course, this decision was made before I knew the price on local stores. So, to find a better price, I turned to the internet, where the prices were great, but the shipment time was longer than a week. A week of anxious waiting was too much. I needed a fast and cheap solution. Luckily, a fellow curious YouTuber by the name of L Means commented on my last video, saying that I could calculate a rough estimate of the turbine speed by using the frequency of the audio captured by the camera. Because once we get the frequency of the audio caused by the turbine spinning, we know the rotations per second. To be honest, that blew my mind. So I immediately tried to do it. I isolated the audio file and loaded it into Audacity, a free audio editor. Link in the description. To get the frequency, I first tried to do an analysis of the file by plotting all the frequencies present in it. In theory, the most prominent frequency would be the one we are looking for, but the graph was showing peaks all over the place. So I decided to do an analysis of the audio directly by zooming on the wave, to try and get this period. Unfortunately, this wave is as far off being a sinusoid as I am of being PewDiePie. Thinking the problem was on the quality of the audio, I recorded again this time using an unidirectional microphone. I also placed a piece of tape on the shaft to create a distinct sound on each rotation. After recording, I eagerly analyzed the audio in the same way and got the same result. In my opinion, the reason why this method works so well for electric motors and not for turbines is because electric motors tend to make less noise while working. Turbines depend on the turbulent flow of fluids to get their movement. Being turbulent, the key word. Elmin's actually warned me about this, but I wanted to give it a go anyway. I was back on square one. And because sound failed me, I decided to turn to light. Infrared light. I bought a small electric component called a photo interrupter. The name is pretty self-explanatory, and the way it functions is really simple. One end emits infrared light, and the other one detects it. While the detector receives the light, the component outputs a one meaning it's open. When the light is interrupted, a zero is outputted, meaning it's closed. My idea was to use the flywheel present on the turbine to interrupt the sensor five times per revolution. Practically speaking, this is what you'll need. A photo interrupter, you can get it for about $2.5. A breakout board to facilitate the electric connections, $1.5. A 220 ohm resistor, virtually no money. A 3-pin adder if you use a breadboard, I didn't, also really cheap. A USB A to B cable, about $1, and an Arduino board. I use an Arduino Mega because I already had one, but you can use an Arduino Nano board, yeah, that's much cheaper. In the next step I started by fixing the sensor to solder it to the breakout board. The pin layout is really simple and every pinhole is properly identified. By now you probably realize that I'm not that good at soldering. It's not easy to solder through a camera monitor, so don't judge me. Next came the 220 ohms resistor, and in the end the three wires to connect to the board. Black to power, white to ground, and red to signal. But because I needed wire extensions, the final color code is actually black to power, orange to signal, and green to ground. On the board I connected the black to 5 volts, the green to ground and the orange to analog zero. To turn on the board I connected it to the computer using the USB cable. 
Once all the hardware was set up, it was time to fire up the Arduino IDE, a free coding tool that allows you to send programs to your Arduino board. To test the sensor, I initially downloaded and used a slightly adapted version of a simple code present in a Spark Fun tutorial. This program will only tell you if the sensor is open, not obstructed, or closed, obstructed. I tried it using the flywheel and nothing happened. Thinking the rims were too thin to block the light, I printed a better design with bigger blades and only two interrupts per rotation. I tried it and yet, no response whatsoever. At this point I'm pretty sure that either the software is badly written or the hardware is malfunctioning. But guess what? It works perfectly with a piece of paper. After some existential insecurities and doubting the laws of physics, I asked the obvious question to Google. Is this for real? What? Fuck this shit. I give up! Apparently, PLA is shit at blocking infrared radiation, but aluminium is pretty good, so I cover the PLA part in aluminium tape and voila, it works like a charm. Additionally, I printed a support part where I fixed the turbine and the sensor using glue. The final result looks like this. In theory it should work perfectly, but I still needed a piece of code to basically count the number of times the sensor is triggered in a second, then calculates the number of RPMs and then displays it. At first I tried to write the code myself, but I was always messing up the time measurements. After searching for a solution on the internet for like 30 seconds, I found a well written, very short and really simple piece of code that was apparently written by what looks like a 9 years old Ukrainian boy. Wait, what? Andri Baranov. He has a YouTube channel. This can't be real. For sure is an old photo. Is not? This kid created the code? And runs a YouTube channel? On his own? What the hell? I could barely handle fractions with his age. I'm subscribing right now. And you should too. This guy will probably invent portal transportation in the future. So I want to be in the first row when that happens. Go Andre! After adapting Andre's code a little bit, I was ready to test the turbine. Before using the compressor, I tested it myself, so I used my lungs as power supply to see how fast I could make this thing spin. Not bad! Not bad at all! I'm actually pretty proud of my result. I would even say that that was a world record. If you want to prove me wrong, accept my challenge. The blow on your Tesla turbine to prove your manliness challenge. Bring it on, bitches! Now with the real deal. Oh, I forgot to say on my last video, but the compressor I'm using has a maximum pressure output of 9 bars, which is about 130 psi. I don't know exactly how much was coming out of the nozzle though. As you might have noticed, one of the inlets is sealed by an M6 screw this time. That's because it was brought to my attention by a very smart gentleman called Obliga, that one of the inlets was acting as an outlet. This made an easier path for the air to take, which instead of making a vortex and coming out through the central exhaust, was making a U-turn, thus giving less power to the turbine. So let's start by proving that. First, I tested the turbine without plugging any of the inlets. And we get a maximum of 6300 rotations per minute. Not bad. Now let's close the left inlet.
much better. 10,240 rotations per minute. Very nice. Okay, just for fun, I tried closing the right inlet and we get 11,140 RPMs. That's a new personal record. And in truth, the turbine jammed in the end. Maybe it could be even higher. I know 11,000 RPMs is a tiny number when comparing it to other turbine builds on YouTube that can get over the 100,000 RPMs mark. But considering this is a simple and cheap project that is made up of mostly a quarter millimeter in resolution 3D printed parts, I'm pretty happy with the result. That doesn't mean I don't want to improve it. Now more than ever I'm interested in this technology. I really want to understand it so I can create a better design to reach higher levels of power. My idea is to create a small series of videos dedicated to the Tesla turbine. The first two as you can imagine are the last one and this one. The next one will be dedicated to the boundary layer effect, the building block to the way this turbine works, and the video I promised I would post this week. Sorry about that. After that I'm releasing a more general video that talks about turbines in general, why is the Tesla turbine so unique, turbine efficiency and how we can use this great invention in the future, but in the way Tesla envisioned. I'll try to end the series with a video in which I intend to use every means at my disposal to create the best design possible. And for that, I'm counting on you guys. Give me criticism, tips, knowledge. I need your help. In between this series, I might post another videos that might or might not be correlated with this series. So the series might take some time to be finished. If you like the idea and want to take part on this journey, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. This is it for today. If you like bloopers, wait for the ending screams. I'm also posting my fuck up. Integza out! To reach higher levels of power. My idea is to create a small series of videos. Series. 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 Series! Was that Dogo? <laughs>